Bedo is a common nickname among Hispanics for people whose names end in Berdo. For example, Roberto. But his name isn't Roberto, it's Robert. He uses Bedo to increase his standing on the progressive stack, manipulating people into thinking he's a minority so he gets their votes and he can represent them. We haven't even started yet, and he's already a lying sack of crap. Spoiler alert, he isn't a minority. Unrestrained money and influence have warped this country's priorities and its very democracy. It has invited cynicism, distrust, and disengagement from Americans who see a government enthralled to those who can pay for access and outcomes. Vote buying, both from the government to citizens and citizens to the government, is a characteristic of late-stage democracies. And people should distrust the government. A vigorous democracy, both economic and political, is the only check on the inertia of power, on the corruption and capture of our institutions, and the only means to elevate the voices and lives of our fellow citizens. All states incentivize a capture of the institutions. The voices and lives of our fellow citizens you seek to elevate are simply trying to capture the institutions for themselves. As are you. The inertia of power is not a glitch, it's a feature. But when the safeguards of our democracy are manipulated by those in power, when members of Congress choose their own voters, when the Supreme Court says that corporations are people and money is speech, when special interests and PACs can purchase elections and legislation, when voting rights are withdrawn, then we seek becoming a democracy in name only. Where the idea that this country holds that we are all born equal to equal opportunity is justifiably seen as a lie by those who experience gross differences in justice, in education, in health, in economic advancement. Your first point on campaign finance was how powerful people use fear and division to get power. Now here you are, son of a district judge, playing on fear that the super scary special interests and PACs to try to become president. You hypocrite. These challenges and the threats to our democracy cannot be met by half measures or with only half the country. It's going to take all we've got, and it's going to take all of us. And we all know he means none of it. The difference between us, where we live, who we love, to whom we pray, how long our families have been in this country, the color of our skin, the party to which we belong, those differences cannot be allowed to define us or divide us now. Therefore, before we are anything else, let us be Americans first, and together, do the work of this country. How about you get out of the way and let us associate voluntarily? That should be an issue we can all unite on. We are individuals first. Let us associate voluntarily and figure out this crap for ourselves. That's an issue we should all be able to unite on. So if we believe in universal, guaranteed, high-quality healthcare, because we see the consequences of our fellow Americans who go without, then let us come together around a policy that prioritizes affordability of prescription drugs, lowers the cost of premiums, and ensures that in a country where one of the largest providers of healthcare services is our county jail system, a country where we have a maternal mortality crisis that is three times as deadly for women of color, that universal healthcare means everyone gets mental healthcare. Now, universal healthcare doesn't necessarily mean single-payer healthcare. His consistent pattern of seeking government authoritarianism as a solution for everything does strongly suggest his desire for government being the sole determining actor in whether individuals live or die. If it really was his goal to make healthcare cheaper, he would be advocating for abolishing copyright laws and patents, getting rid of the FDA. But the fact that he's not indicates that he's either ignorant or disingenuous. Pick one. Either way, a government that has control over your healthcare controls your life. And universal also means every woman makes her own decisions about her own body. Has he said anything about getting government funding out of Planned Parenthood? I'm not in favor of a government ban on abortion either, don't get me wrong. But why should I be forced to subsidize murder, you son of a bitch? We can give every American and every business the choice to enroll in Medicare without eliminating plans that many Americans like for their families because they work for their families. This means every one of us is able to afford our prescriptions, see a doctor, take our children to a therapist. No one priced out. No one denied care. No one left behind. The goal of universal, guaranteed, high-quality health care must be achieved as quickly and as surely as possible. If you like your doctor, you will be able to keep your doctor. Period. If you like your health care plan, you will be able to keep your health care plan. Period. If we believe in an economy that works for all, then let us invest in a world-class pre-K through 12 education system and ensure that we are paying our educators a living wage so that they don't have to work a second or third job. The U.S. pays more than almost any other country on education per student, and our results are still substandard. You can't just throw money at the problems inherent in the Prussian system of education and call it fixed. Hell, most of these flaws are actually features. There, by design. 
the Prussian system was deliberately created to create unthinking, obedient slaves without any critical thinking ability whatsoever. Let's graduate young women and men from high school who are career ready as well as college ready, able to pursue debt free higher education or a job that provides purpose and a real paycheck. I wonder why he said women first. He's not gender baiting, is he? He just loves womans. Do you like womans? Love them harder. LOVE THEM! Get the government out of education already. This isn't complicated. Let's strengthen unions and ensure a path to apprenticeships and careers. In states that don't have right to work laws, you have to join a union as a condition of employment. It is literally illegal to work in those jobs without their precious little stamp of approval, which usually comes with the price tag of yet another percentage of your income taken for corrupt bureaucrats on top of government taxation. Unions are dying and good riddance. What the hell are you thinking? Strengthening unions. Guarantee that one job is enough by paying every working American a true living wage. You can guarantee that one job is enough for every working American by getting the government to go away. You authoritarians are an impediment to prosperity, not its facilitator. And all increasing the minimum wage is going to do is make jobs more scarce. Otherwise, you would just increase the minimum wage to $1 million an hour. Let's partner with rural communities on infrastructure, schools, hospitals, and broadband internet. Translation. Give the corporations that donate to my campaign special contracts to build infrastructure. This is vote buying, plain and simple. Let's make sure farmers can make a profit while they grow the food and fiber that feeds and clothes not just this country, but so much of the world. It's not the state's role to ensure farmers make a profit. That's called corporatism. Let's give them access to technologies and markets that make solving climate change a source of new income. Corporatism! Let's ensure everyone can succeed regardless of their family dynamics, their gender, their sexual orientation, or their race. Paid family leave, equal pay for women, no discrimination in the workplace, and access to capital for communities that have been effectively shut out of capital, home loans, and wealth for generations. Paid family leave isn't up to you. Equal pay for women has been so thoroughly debunked, it's not even worth getting into anymore. Plus, it's already illegal. So is workplace discrimination. As for access to capital, this is literally already a law called the Community Reinvestment Act, which is responsible for the 2008 financial crash. You asshole. If we believe in real criminal justice reform, in the face of the largest prison population in the face of the planet, one disproportionately comprised of people of color, let us not just end the prohibition of marijuana, or the expungement of the records of those arrested solely for the possession of a substance legal in most of this country. Let's go beyond ending cash bail, prisons for profit, and the war on drugs. There is so much right here, I don't even know where to begin. And confront the true legacy of slavery, of segregation and suppression, of how people have been criminalized and kept down based on their race and ethnicity. Only the truth will allow us to repair the damage done and keep us from repeating the same injustices. Absolute race baiting. Attempting to provoke guilt or demand reparations for crimes nobody alive is a victim of or a perpetrator of. Way to make yourself the white savior here, Robert. If we believe that this country's success is premised on the fact that immigrants and asylum seekers from the world over have found a home here, then let us forever free dreamers from any fear of deportation by making them U.S. citizens. Let's bring millions more of our fellow Americans out of the shadows and onto a path to contribute even more to our country's success. How about we get the government out of controlling borders entirely and realize that citizenship is an arbitrary distinction between people? Well, I mean, this is a good first step. Let's not only honor our asylum laws and never again take another child from another parent at their most desperate and vulnerable moment, but guarantee that all separated families are reunited. Let's acknowledge that every man, every woman, every child in detention, including those behind fences and barbed wire under our international bridges connecting us with Mexico, are our fellow human beings and deserve to be treated like human beings. I mean, I agree, but one doesn't need to use race baiting to make a point, as you've been doing a lot here, or invoking long debunked nonsense about families being separated. If we want to avoid this completely, get the government out of border enforcement. Let's ensure our security not through walls and militarization, but by investing in our ports of entry, where the vast majority of everything and everyone that ever comes into this country first enters. Supporting the women and men of the CBP and treating one another, regardless of our status or how many generations or days we've been in this country, with dignity and respect. What does this even mean? 
And if we're serious about security, let this country of immigrants, Republicans, Independents, and Democrats rewrite our immigration laws in our own image, from our own experiences, and in the best traditions of this great country. What does that even mean? If we are truly grateful for the veterans that have fought this country's wars, who came back from Vietnam to a country that did not understand or thank them for their service, who are coming back from wars that are 27 years long in Iraq, 17 in Afghanistan, let us not only ensure that we meet every single part of our obligation to them, their PTSD treated, a roof over the head of every homeless vet, an investment in the treatments and conditions unique to combat and service, let us also make sure that before we enter yet another war, that we have exhausted every single peaceful alternative, and that we end the wars that have no definition of victory or strategy to win them, and bring these service members back home to their families and their communities. He says this now, but when he gets into office and realizes that U.S. being the world police force is the only thing keeping the U.S. economy and the U.S. dollar afloat, well, expect him to change his tone real quick and make State of the Union addresses about how we need to bring democracy to the next country trying to undermine the petrodollar. It's good he wants to avoid pointless wars, but he's also talking about spending other people's stolen money. If we understand that climate change is real, it is caused by our own excess and inaction, that the floods, fires, and droughts that we are currently experiencing are only going to get much worse if this planet warms another one degree Celsius, then let us organize this country around a historic effort to free this economy from a dependence on greenhouse gas emissions, invest in the technologies and jobs, and renewable energy that will speed this transition and reassert our international leadership before it's too late. Ho 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 ho! You ain't seen nothing yet! Hit it! Start cutting pollution on day one, and taking executive actions to lead on climate. Basically amounts to a big government spending program on cutting down the United States economy's production and its ability to produce. This is going to make life much harder and much more unaffordable for you, me, and everyone. Mobilize 5 trillion for climate change with investment in infrastructure, innovation, and our people and communities. The United States is $22 trillion in debt already. You're using money stolen from people to pay for things that will necessarily make life more difficult to live. This is cut straight out of the Green New Deal. Guarantee our net zero emissions ambition by 2050. If there's any question as to whether or not Robert wants to make the US a planned command economy, this is it. Defend our communities that are preparing for and fighting against extreme weather! This problem always seems to be urgent, doesn't it? That if we don't do something now, bad weather will happen. This isn't much different than when advertisers tell you that the sales are only for a limited time, so call right now! The difference is that you can voluntarily disassociate from companies that are trying to sell stuff to you. This urgency is meant to override your critical thinking with a sense of panic. Oh, if we don't stop global cooling right now, then that's tantamount to denying that it's happening. Which is something that Robert unironically stated. But every solution presented, without exception. Well, it's the same with all status solutions. The problem is always that we have too much liberty, too much autonomy in our economic decision making, and the solution presented is the need for central planners to nudge us into doing their bidding through incentives. Shove us through increased bureaucracy, legislation, and economic restrictions, and then shoot us if we resist. After all, that's all legislation is. Opinions with guns. No problem exists in the world that is so dire that we must restrict the agency of the individual. That's called tyranny. Back to the main site. Much as we met the existential threat to the Western democracies of Nazi Germany nearly 80 years ago, and at the same time helped to lift millions of Americans into the middle class, we have an opportunity to meet the existential threat to this planet by ensuring that public health policy, economic policy, and the engine of a far more conscientious capitalism is put to work in service of our ability to meet this challenge. You gotta love how the implicit assumption is that the prosperity of post-war America in the late 40s and 50s is credited to World War II. I've already debunked war Keynesianism, how it's just the broken window fallacy on a continental scale, so I don't need to get into it. But again, you see the echoings of the Green New Deal. How Robert wants the US to have a planned economy in an endeavor that will ultimately destroy any last vestige of belief that the government is even capable of solving economic problems. It is important that this work ensures that every American benefits, including those poor and minority communities that have so often bore the brunt of climate change. 
it will benefit nobody. Even the politically connected and elite are screwed in the long run. After all, once this house of cards collapse, who do you think people are going to go after first? And when it comes to international leadership, this current administration, responsible for spurning our true friends and alliances, forged in sacrifice from the generations before us, squandering a standing this country has enjoyed for nearly 80 years, must be replaced by an administration that strengthens our historic friendships, earns the respect of the world, not just in how we treat people in other countries, but how we treat people in our own country, and brings the world together around otherwise intractable problems. From building on the Paris Agreement, to achieve an even bolder action on climate, to pursuing nuclear disarmament, to ending our wars and finding peaceful, diplomatic paths forward. This is just flowery language that violently fluctuates between meaningless word salads and globalist authoritarianism. We must focus on this hemisphere and once again make it a foreign policy priority of this country. We can either address the problems in Central America at our border or help the people of Central America address them at home. This country can once again take its place as the indispensable nation, doing what no other country can for ourselves and for the world. Most of those countries want us to go away. It's not our business what happens in other countries. But if we want to do any of this, let us agree that our success as a country is based on the success of this democracy, the greatest mechanism devised to bring forth the power of people. We don't agree. Because democracy is two wolves and a sheep voting on what's for dinner. The centralization of power in the hands of a coercive monopoly is antithetical to the success of this country. Just because of my democracy doesn't mean you can avoid this fact. It's not okay for you to be enslaved just because 51% of people vote for it. So every citizen must be able to cast their vote, have their voice heard. We must sign into law a new Voting Rights Act. We must forever banish big money from our politics and gerrymandering and enact same-day voter registration in every part of the country. So every citizen must make their voice heard in my democracy. Unless you're a citizen who happens to be part of big money, then shut up and do what we tell you. This is a democracy, don't you know? Let us also acknowledge that any hope of full political democracy must be premised on an unwavering pursuit of economic democracy. Property rights are not up for a vote, you totalitarian cheese weasel. Every child must see a future for themselves in this country, or we will have no future as a democracy. We have no future as a democracy. Any society that wishes to have a future must reject all political authority, including democratic authority. The unprecedented concentration of wealth, power, and privilege in the United States must be broken apart. Opportunity must be fully shared with all. Concentration of wealth and opportunity are two separate things. Plus, there's no statement of principle here, or even any indication as to whether or not it will be taken away on the basis of legitimate ownership or through statist rent-seeking. Either way, who are they to determine who should have wealth and who shouldn't? How will they know? What is too much wealth? Will this standard be applied consistently? Si queremos reinventar los retos de cuidado de salud por dotos de la forma de Freaking hibi the hobbit up. English! Speak English! We will not be defined by our fears or the smallness of our differences. We will instead be known by our ambitions, our aspirations, and the resolve, the creativity, the service, and sacrifice by which we will have achieved them. Then eliminate the state already!